We are going to solve some problems from our study guide, starting with number one. We've got this cycle for a heat engine, and they tell us that the temperature at A is 800. Now, before I get started, I'm going to write down ordered pairs for each of these points. Uh, that's going to help us a lot with the math that is yet to come. So x comma y, x comma y. All right, a and d have the same x value. If you trace down to the x-axis, it comes to 0 0.095. 0 0.095 meters cubed is the unit. But I'm not going to put that right now. Um, on my key, I think I said 0.1, so my values on the key are slightly off. This is the correct value. And, all right, what's the y value at point D? Let's start here. I go over to the y-axis, and I get 2, oh, careful now, times 10 to the 5th. And I have the same y value here at C, 2 times 10 to the 5th. But what's the volume at C? Well, the x-axis, the volume, has a value of 0.4. And it's the same here at B. They are on the same spot along the x-axis. Uh, but what's the pressure at A and B? It's the same, right? A and B are at the same height. Their y-axis value is the same. They are both at 4 times 10 to the 5th. So there's a lot of overlap here. All right, find the temperature at B, C, and D. Well, this is not too bad because if we think about the uh, equation of state of an ideal gas, number of moles is constant. We assume always that gas isn't leaking into the engine or out of the engine. R is always constant, never changes in any circumstances. So if we divide both sides by T, we get N times R, which is a constant. That means that you take this ratio for point A, let's say, and you take the ratio for maybe point B or any other point, and they both yield the same constant, so they must equal each other. That's how we do part A. So to find the temperature at B, I'm going to use exactly this equation that I just wrote down. And I have all the values, you know, I know the temperature at A. This is my unknown. Uh, well, look at this. From A to B, they have the same pressure, 4 times 10 to the 5th. So when you plug in pressure, it's going to cancel. You don't have to even plug it in. And then you just calculate the value. Uh, we know this, right? The volume at A is 0.95. The volume at B, we know, that's 0.4. Okay? We do the same thing for, you know, C and D. Um, you can choose any two, you know, you could say, okay, for going B to C, pressure volume over temperature equals pressure times volume. That's supposed to be at P over temperature. And from B to C, if we plug in the values, you know, you know this because you calculated it right here. <clears throat> when you plug in, they have the same volume at B and C. So those values are going to cancel. You don't even have to plug in. And you do this uh, finally at point D, choosing, you know, you could go equate pressure at C times volume at C, pressure at D, and you could solve that way. Here are the answers you get. There, right there, is the temperature at B, temperature at C, and the temperature at D. This is using 0.095 as the volume. We move on. Find the change in internal energy along each leg. Okay. Well, internal energy is 3 halves nRT. That's the equation from our data booklet. But nRT is equal to pressure times volume. That's how we're going to find the change in internal energy. Along AB, along BC, each of the four legs. So delta U is simply 3 halves 
P final V final, that's the final U, minus the initial. Like that. And you can factor out the three halves. You can plug in the values for, you know, B and A. The final is B, the initial is A. We're going from A to B. <clears throat> but they have the same pressure. See that? So you could just factor out the pressure as well, the 4 times 10 to the 5th. And then for your final minus initial volume, we ended at a volume of 0.4, and we started at a volume of 0 0.095. And you calculate. And we are going to do the exact same thing for each of these... Oops, let's clone. For each of these uh, legs... That's all we do. And clearly I didn't give myself enough space, or you for that matter, to do this work. And one last time, well, let's see it, folks. Wait. Clone. We do the same thing for DA. And of course, you know, there's always gonna be something you can factor out because in every single process, pressure was constant or volume was constant. One or the other was constant for every one of those processes. Okay, we get our answers, and it comes to these. Here are the values we get. Be careful, make sure you subtract the correct value, you know? Um, like on CD, it should become a negative answer because from C to D, your final is this. Your final volume is 0.095. Your initial is 0.4, so it should come out negative. So be careful with that. Find the amount of energy. What are they talking about, energy? Well, they're always referring to heat energy. Um, if they say given to, taken from, you'll also see the word transferred. That's a clue that they want to talk about heat energy. They might actually use the word heat. I sure hope so. Uh, but is that how you spell transferred? That looks really wrong. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> Energy is Q. So, okay, how do we do that? Well, same thing as before. Consider each leg one at a time. BC. How do you spell transferred? This is going to bug me. The cold medicine has prevented me from remembering how to spell transferred. In each case, we apply the first law of thermodynamics. I always mix up which one comes first, delta U or W. And, okay, this is pretty straightforward. <clears throat> we know delta U for each one. So that's easy. Half the work is done. And if we look up from B to C, the volume did not change. From A to D, the volume did not change. So BC, no work is done. DA, no work is done. The work is the pressure times the change in volume. And if you don't change volume, no work's done. Now, <clears throat> we can actually calculate with this formula if pressure is constant. And it is for both of these scenarios. So this work is just going to be the constant pressure, which I think that's the higher up one, right? 4 times 10 to the 5th, that's the line that's higher on the graph. And then what's the change in volume? Well, we end at the higher volume, and we start at the smaller volume. That's 5. My computer is running slow right now. That's 9. And likewise, for this work, that's the line that happens lower down on the graph, so it's a lower pressure, a lower y value, which was 2. And we are ending now, it's final minus initial, we end on that leg at 0.95, and we start at the bigger 0.4. So it's going to come negative, that one's going to come out negative. <clears throat> okay, when you get your answers, they should come to this. Now if you look at this, just real quick, just looking, some of these Qs are positive, some are negative. So what's the energy put into the system? Well, it's this plus that. 
these two together, summed, give us the total energy, the heat energy, transferred to the gas as part of the heat engine. Why is that value important? I mean, let me just first point out, that's the total energy that's going into the system. Some of that energy is wasted, and it's just removed as waste heat at the end. That's what these are. And the rest of that becomes useful work. Okay? So the input, remember what a heat engine is and how it operates. Heat engines, basically, you know, you can think of it like this. We've got a fire over here. We've got ice cubes over here. And in between the two, there is a pinwheel. And we get some air. The air, that's our system. And the air is first starts out by the fire. Maybe there's a pipe or something. And that air gets heat transferred to it from the hot reservoir. That's Q in. Sometimes we also call it Q hot, the heat from the hotter reservoir. And then that air travels, because heat travels from hot to cold. And as it travels, it spins Mr. Pinwheel or Mrs. Pinwheel. And that's the useful work that we get out. That's the useful work, the mechanical work. But then the gas arrives at the ice cubes, and it gives away any excess heat that it has. And we call that Q out, or Q cold, the heat transferred to the colder reservoir. So heat itself cannot be cold or hot. The hot does not refer to the heat. Heat is heat. It's just the transferred energy. They're talking here in the subscript, is the heat being transferred from the hot reservoir or to the cold reservoir? <clears throat> okay, so the total is Q in. Some of that goes toward work. The rest is dumped. And the efficiency is the useful output divided by the total input. That's why I showed that Q in value. You have to find Q in. It's the sum of the positive Qs. And this is just the area enclosed by the graph. So this is Qn. That's your denominator. This is the wasted amount. I mean, if you want, the work has to be equal to uh, this. And then we have to subtract away that value and this value. And that should be the work that you calculate when you do the area enclosed by the graph. So <clears throat> we go back. The actual efficiency, we're not talking about the Carnot efficiency, by the way. They don't, not, they don't mention that word anywhere. Um, and it doesn't follow the Carnot cycle. Carnot cycle is a very specific, you know, you need those adiabatic compressions and expansions. Those adiabats, whoops, do not exist in this graph. So it's not Carnot here, totally different. We do output, which is the work, divided by input, which is the heat we transfer into the gas. That's the energy we kind of start with. And again, the work is just the area enclosed. So if you get this area, uh, well, that's a rectangle. So you do base times height. The base goes from 0.095. The base is this, the difference. And the height is from 2 to 4, so 2 times 10 to the 5th. And you could write this base as point, oh, whoa, point 0.3. Oh, 5, right? You multiply by those, those two. That's your numerator. You divide by the total input heat which was the two positive values of Q that we found.